Um, looking at the sponge, what are some common errors that people make when making an argument? Sarah, name one, quickly and Not succinctly. Not enough detail to support their uh, statement. Okay, not enough details, absolutely. Uh, not talking about the argument? Like, so being off topic? topic? Yep, being off topic, absolutely. Okay. That's okay. Anything else? Okay. No give reasons why not. So some they're almost disproving their own argument. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they may end up starting to disprove their own argument by chance. Not given the uh, not given the why, like given choices, like why you should or why you should not. Okay, so offering kind of something that's a little Both too sides. clear cut. Oh, okay. So all right, that would work as well. Um, it's these ideas of making mistakes while making an argument that we're going to be focusing on today. It's this idea of logical fallacy. Now, fallacy, does anybody know that word? No. There's another word in the English language that begins with F-A-L, has an S sound in it as well. Facility. Facilities. Nope, not facilities, but also true. Facial. No. It's the word false. False. False logic or logical oh. falseness is where we're going to be looking at today. Okay, fallacies. <laughs> so, here's where we're going to begin. You have a piece of paper that has an editorial on both sides. One side says Adam lands as weapons, and the other side says uh, editorial gun control, something like that. For 15 minutes. For, bit, for 15 minutes, you are going to be working in your groups to read both these articles and begin to kind of answer these questions. Now, you don't have to write them in full sentences. You don't have to you jot them down anywhere specific. But you need to be able to talk about them, make some notes about them. So here's how we're going to do this. The first 10 minutes or so, I'm going to ask you to read independently. Give everybody a chance to really read and focus. Make sure you are annotated. And make sure you are taking notes on your paper that will be able to be used to answer these questions. For the last five minutes, you will be working in your groups to come up with an argument. You're working with both articles, and you're working on the questions that are on the board. One thing I do want you guys to focus on before we start talking about this is the second question, which is the weaker argument. And what I want you to think about is what would have been different had I asked you to find the stronger argument. Now inherently, if I ask you to find the weaker one, doesn't that imply there's a stronger one? Yes. Okay, and if I ask you to find the stronger one, inherently that means there's a weaker one. But when I ask you to find the weaker argument, what do you start looking for? Raising a hand, what do you start looking for? Go ahead. Whose argument is better? Okay. And it might be better, but you're going to determine it better through different sets of criteria. Which one uses less detail? You're going to start looking for what's wrong, right? So it could be less detail, could be improper use of certain things. But the idea is, if I ask you to find the weaker argument, you're going to start looking for things that are wrong. If I ask you to find the better argument, you're going to start looking for things that are what? Right. right. So I want to focus on the weaker part. Somebody please tell me what the weaker argument is. Tell me what you think the weaker argument is. Are these for both of these, or is it just like between these two? You between have those two, yep. Yeah. Jeremy thinks Adam Lance's weapons. Why? Because it says the sad fact of the matter is that Congress is made up of a bunch of idiots that can make the same government. How does calling Congress a bunch of idiots weaken this argument? That's their opinion. Okay, so it's an injection of opinion. Okay? Very good. Somebody else? 
There's not a right or wrong here, so I don't think that there is. I said the lens is two. Why? Because it doesn't give half of as much as the editorial of the details and why. So you're saying it's weaker because it's not it's, given enough. It's just given less information. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. I think that's right. All right. So it's this idea, guys. It's this idea of which is weaker that's going to lead us into our discussion of fallacies. So turn to your page that has the guided notes. And we're going to talk about different fallacies. But we need to know what a fallacy is first. So here's a fallacy. This goes on your guided notes. A fallacy is a common error in reasoning that undermines your argument. In the second line, that word undermine, what does that mean? Raising a hand, what does the word undermine mean? Nope, doesn't mean it's actually under something that belongs to me, although creative use of the words, I agree. Is there a word we could replace that with? Underestimate? No, I, I understand why you're putting that, but it's not underestimate. Think back to the last question. I said I wanted you looking for the weaker argument, right? And actually, based on what Sarah said, she said one of the reasons that Adam Lanza's was weaker was because it had less facts and less detail, right? Yeah. It weakened the argument because it had weak logic, right? So that brings us here. You can replace the word undermine with weaken. When we talk about logical fallacies, we're talking about something that weakens your argument. Yeah. And there's a lot of these, and they all have names. And you'd be surprised how often you see them in your everyday lives. I'm going to give you a second to finish writing, and then we're going to look at some. The first one is called ad hominem. Ad hominem. And this is an attack on someone's character. This is an attack on someone's character. This is, instead of focusing on an argument or focusing on an opinion, you start to focus on the person. Jeremy's example out of the article, where it said Congress is a bunch of idiots, is an ad hominem attack. Instead of saying, I disagree with Congress and what they're doing and how they're handling themselves, instead it said, they're stupid. We are going to watch a video that demonstrates ad hominem. Meet Ned Lamont. He can't make a decent cup of coffee. Everybody wang chung tonight. He's a bad karaoke singer. And he has a messy desk. Aren't you sick of political attack ads that insult your intelligence? Senator Lieberman, let's stick to the issues and pledge to support whoever wins the Democratic primary. I'm Ned Lamont and I approve this message. His talk is really not that bad. What's the advertisement for? The political what? Be more debate, you know. Not a debate. Are you the government? What about government? It's it's about like the government. Say it again. Voting. It's not about voting. Let's watch it again. Say we're voting. Ah, to the vote for the Clemens Act. Five. Got coffee. Let's watch it again. 
Meet Ned Lamont. He can't make a decent cup of coffee. Everybody wang chung tonight. He's a bad karaoke singer. And he has a messy desk. Aren't you sick of political attack ads that insult your intelligence? Senator Lieberman, let's stick to the issues and pledge to support whoever wins the Democratic primary. I'm Ned Lamont and I approve this message. His talk is really not that bad. He says don't vote for him. Well, it's actually an ad saying, I want to be in the U.S. Senate. It's an ad for him to be in the U.S. Senate. But what is he kind of poking fun of? And that's where you guys started coming in. His opponent at this point was using ad hominem attacks, saying Ned is a bad guy, Ned doesn't know what he's talking about. So what he did in the commercial is he made fun of that. Does it matter that he can't make a cup of coffee, can't sing, and has a messy desk if he wants to be a senator? No. No. But people use those kind of attacks all the time. Because until you stop to think about it, they start to make a little bit of sense. Think about the messy desk one. Do you want somebody who's unorganized being your senator? Some people would be very persuaded by the fact that he has a messy desk, even though it has nothing to do with anything. The next one is called red herring. It's called red herring. Red herring is an irrelevant topic, or you do something to di try to distract from the original issue. I see this almost every day as a teacher. Somebody comes in, they're wearing their coat, I say, I need you to take your coat off. What do I usually get in return? No. They're wearing it. Well, we're going to come back to their wear now. No. Sometimes I get no, but what else do I often get? I do what I want. Say again. It's cold. It's cold. Now, until I stop to think, it would make sense. Yeah, I, I need you to take your coat off, you say it's cold. In my head, it's logical for me to think, oh, if it's cold, you should wear your coat. Until I start to think about the rules and the dress code and whatnot. But by telling me it's cold, you're trying to distract me from what's going on. If you look at the example up here, the first person has a picture of outside, the environment. And the second person is saying, we can't worry about the environment, we're in the middle of a war. Is the war and the environment, or are they related? Are they connected? No. Yeah. Okay. Tricky. Yeah, that's tricky. I agree. In this case, when it's saying this person wants to worry about the environment and the other person saying we can't worry about the environment because we're in a war, do those seem to go together? No. Based on this argument yeah. here. No. They don't go together here. Now some of you are saying war and environment go together and that's a separate conversation. Okay, but by, by bringing up a new subject to distract from the first subject, that's a red herring. The third one is what Jeremy was saying a second ago. Well, he's doing it and she's doing it. They have their coat on. That's what we're going to call bandwagon. This is the classic mom line. Your mom or dad says to you after you ask to do something, they say, well, you know, if your friend jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? Yeah. But that's bandwagon. <laughs> that's all bandwagon. Mom, I want this, that, or the other. No. Well, they're doing it. As if that adds any credibility. Thinking about appeals, what appeal gets used with bandwagon? Or bandwagon is, is an attempt at what appeal? Oh, ethical. Ethical, why? Because you're giving credibility to the other people who are doing it too. By saying others are doing it, you're trying to, give um, you're trying to validate or give credibility to what's happening. Very good. Next one is either or. Either Ooh. or. And either or suggests that there are only two choices, when in fact there are others. So in the example, it says, we can either stop using cars or destroy the earth. Are those really our only two options? No. 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 We can ride a bike. We can take the bus. We can come up with alternative fuel sources. We have other options. But let's take a look at why this is effective. 
if I go up to Carlos and I say, Carlos, we can either destroy the earth or we can stop using cars. Which one are you going to choose? Stop using the cars. I force you to make the decision that I want. Nobody's going to say, oh, I think we should just destroy the earth. I think we should I just would. destroy the earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go with the most obvious choice. Yeah, how would you destroy the earth if you said it? Bomb it. It's not a word. Like, oh, you know there's no North Pole? There is a North Pole. No, there's not. There's a magnetic and a true North Pole. You know, you know, you know, there's a pole that says North Pole. Let's, let's, let's no. move on. And we can talk about North Pole later. All right, because I, I got that on we. Later. Later. Take a look up here, guys. Slippery slope. ABC. Slippery slope suggests that one thing will lead to the next, which will lead to the next, which will lead to the next. I thought that was like a lie. One lie usually does lead to another. But if we look at the example here, it says, if we ban Hummers, a particularly um, inefficient car, we ban them because they're all bad for the environment. Eventually, the government will ban all cars. So we should not ban Hummers. We're actually seeing this in today's society. There's a current political situation going on today that a lot of slippery slopes being used. Anybody know what it is? Guns. Guns. That was a guess. Okay. <laughs> it is guns, though. After the killings in Connecticut, there's been a lot of talk of trying to ban citizens owning assault weapons. And a lot of gun rights advocates are saying, well, if you take the assault weapons, next you'll come for my handguns, and then we'll, they'll take all our guns, and our Second Amendment rights are gone. This is an actual argument. Which is a good argument. It depends who you ask. So I'm going to show you an example of slippery slope. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. So, slippery slope. One thing leads to the next, which leads to the next, which leads to the next. Clearly, that doesn't happen. Okay. I've gotten hit in the face while playing racquetball before and I didn't end up in a roadside ditch. But the argument still is there. The next one. Begging the question. Begging the question is hard. Begging the question deals with almost a cyclical or going in a circle type argument. It's when you try to use your claim Tries, you try to use your argument as evidence for your argument. Look at the example. It says politicians are inherently dishonest because no honest person would run for public office. This essentially is saying politicians are dishonest because dishonest people are politicians. I like that, like, I can't think of what it's called, but it's something, it's something that we learn. It's like a little area or something. Where it's like, he is a boy. Boys like soccer. Logical Therefore, reasoning, that's logos. Yes. Okay, and in a way it is logos, and this is where a lot of people will try to use logos, but let's look at what's happening here. Have I proven anything if I say politicians are dishonest because dishonest people are politicians? No. It just keeps going in a circle, right? Yeah. This is what a lot of people do on your constructed responses. You'll tell me that a metaphor is persuasive, and then at the end, for your explanation, you'll tell me again, and this is why a metaphor is persuasive. Have you proven anything? No, no you've taken your statement, your claim, and put it at the bottom. So a lot of people do this. And the last one is false cause and effect. This one shouldn't be hard. We all know what a cause and effect is. We learned about it with organizational patterns. So if we're talking about false cause and effect, what we're talking about 
is you say one thing led to another, when in fact what? It's not true. It's not true. It didn't happen. So, let's watch a video for this one. Clearly in the way. <laughs> All right. Aha! Uh <-huh. laughs> hey, Joey. How you doing? Great. Roomy? <laughs> yeah, I guess we are roommates now. I know. Oh, well, now that you bring it up, uh, our fridge is broken. We have to get a new one. I uh, checked around, and your half is $400. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm not paying for half of that. I'm only staying here until my apartment gets fixed. Look, Rich, my parents bought this fridge just after I was born. Okay? <laughs> now, I have never had a problem with it. Then you show up and it breaks. <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> that refrigerators don't live as long as people? I know, you know that the ATM only lets you take out 300 at a time, so I'll take a check for the other 100. <laughs> You're joking, right? Of course, I'm joking. I don't take checks. <laughs> Thank God you're pretty. <laughs> so what's the false cause and effect there, guys? The refrigerator broke. That is hard fault that the refrigerator broke. Right. He's saying, you showed up, the fridge broke. The problem is, is that that fridge had been around since he was born. Makes no sense, right? But uh, that kind of argument is often presented. So here's what you guys are going to do, and it's going to actually end up becoming kind of like your exit slip, though I suspect you'll finish in time that we can talk about it at the end. You have another article that is called uh, No Homework Tonight? Yes, No Homework Tonight. And there are five questions on the back. What you're going to be looking for are fallacies. Um, So here's what you're going to be doing. Um, we're going to read this like we read the other ones. So for about five to ten minutes, I'm going to ask you guys to read on your own. Then in your groups, you're going to work together to answer the questions. And then we will come together and talk about um, the answers. The only thing that I want to try to uh, fit in today, um, I want to leave about five minutes at the end of the period so that we can talk about last week's test. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so five to ten minutes on your own, and then we'll come back together.